Buongiorno everybody. It's Friday and you know, in the past, or actually most of my life, Friday is usually a pizza night. So of course, Fridays make me think of breads. But since we have been doing so much zucca, some pumpkin and squash, um, we're gonna do something really fun today. So we're making a pumpkin bread and what's gonna be really cool is it's gonna look like a pumpkin. So this is really fun. So we're gonna start out like I usually make my regular pumpkin, uh, my regular bread, I should say. Um, but we're gonna do something a little different today. So instead of just using water, since I'm already putting pumpkin pulp in here, but I thought, wouldn't it be fun to actually use the water, and this is filtered water that I cooked my zucca in. So what I used today, and I've got it sitting right here, and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. So what I did already was this is the last piece of a Hubbard squash. So this is a Hubbard squash, or zucca di Hubbard. You know, it's, I looked it up to see what the translation was in Italian. It said Zucca di Hubbard. So I don't know, I guess this is an American one or whatever, but um, I haven't found an actual Italian translation, which I thought was pretty funny. But this is the last piece, which I'm gonna do something else with later. So anyway, but I have the water from that. So, and it's, this is actually still warm. So this is gonna be actually nice for the dough. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to start with our yeast. Oops. We're gonna always start with the yeast first I like, there's so many ways to make breads. So some people put the yeast right in the mix. Some put mix it in with the flour. Some mix it in with the water. Some do, you know, there's so many ways. I personally, especially I keep my yeast in the freezer and I buy it by the pound bag. So I keep it in a Ziploc and keep it in the freezer. This is my regular dry yeast. Then there's of course, you know, your, um, the stuff you make yourself, you know, your mother yeast make your lievito madre, your mother yeast that is basically your sourdough, your starter. Um, so we've done all different kinds. This is quick today, we're using the dry yeast. In Italy, this would be similar to a lievita di birra, which is a, a beer yeast, which I don't know what it comes from, but anyway, it's what they use that's comparable. So um, what we're gonna do, so what I did was, I like to use my filtered water so I warmed, actually, I warmed up a little water, but I can tell you right now it's too hot. And you, what you want your water to be is lukewarm, because otherwise you kill the yeast. So I'm gonna add a little cold water to it. And it's about half hot water and half cold, and it is perfect. It's literally just, almost just above room temperature. So one of your packets, if you buy those little packets at the grocery store, one of those or one tablespoon of yeast is all you need for this. This is a single recipe would make you two loaves of bread or like 15 rolls, something like that. Of course, you can make one giant loaf if you want. Oops, let's stir this up. So important here, is one little pinch of sugar, just like a, a quarter, like a half a teaspoon, just to feed the yeast. And this is how I know if my yeast is alive still, if I haven't killed it or it's gotten too old. So while I'm getting everything else prepared, um, this will start to bubble and rise, and that will let me know that it's, it, the yeast is good. It should be good, it usually is. I think in all these years, only once, maybe twice, that I have yeast that didn't rise, so I threw it away and got some more, or used a different packet. So anyway, we're gonna start with a cup and a half, no, I'm sorry, about two cups of water. Now this is, uh, this actually has the measures right on it. Let me see how much I have in here. Whoops, where is it? So, oh. So this is four cups. So I'm gonna put half of this in. A little more. And just one more splash. Okay, so that's two cups of water. 
two cups of pumpkin water. Isn't that cool? And now we're gonna put in a tablespoon of salt. You can use your, and yes, I know that this is a tablespoon because I've done it a gajillion times. You can use coarse, you know, you can use sea salt. I like my sea salt, um, of course, or fine. Doesn't matter, it's all gonna dissolve. So let's get me a spoon. Just get this to dissolve. One of the things you have to know about making bread, it's first of all, it's really hard to mess up. As long as you don't kill the yeast, you're fine. You will make bread. But one little important tip, one, don't make your water too hot. And two, don't put your salt together immediately with your yeast. They need to be incorporated in their two pieces before they come together. Otherwise the salt will kill the yeast. Okay. So we've got that melting down. So the next thing we're gonna do is add a couple of cups of flour. So today I'm gonna make this um, half white and half whole wheat, or maybe just like a little bit more white because this is gonna be a little denser because of the squash in it. So we're gonna start with three cups of flour, approximately. It's not exact because this recipe will take a little bit more flour in the end because the squash is adding more liquid. And I don't, I don't adjust making the water less to make it a perfect um, mix. I like to just go ahead and add more flour and I'll end up with an extra roll. If I'm making it, I'm making it, you know? <clears throat> now with this dough, we can make, um, you know, just bread. We can make a focaccia which I think I'm gonna make one focaccia um, with some, I put, uh, I'm gonna, I have some actually, you can do it with rosemary. I'm actually, I am, no, I've got everything, but I've got out of rosemary. I mean, I've got some, actually, I shouldn't say that, I've got some dried, but we're gonna do something different because I have some fresh sage. So we're gonna put some sage in here. So, Look up, see this is starting to, can you see that it's starting to rise? So it's, you can see the water part here and you can see the bubbles in the second half. I don't know if you can see that, but anyway. So that's getting ready. So now we have, just mix this in. Now you can do this whole thing on your board and I love doing that. When you're doing like a one loaf recipe, I never make less than two to four loaves. So I like to, just for the sake of mess, I start it in a bowl and then I turn it down onto my board, so. All right, so now I have my salty water mixed with the flour. So if I add the yeast in now, it's dispersed enough that it's fine. So that's exactly the next thing we're gonna do. We're gonna add the yeast. We're gonna mix it all in, make sure it's completely incorporated. Take your time, because otherwise it splashes. And yes, if there, somebody's gonna ask the question, can you do this in your mixer? Of course you can. Well, this is my favorite mixer. And of course I've got the big, you know, the big KitchenAid back there. But honestly, I've never made a small enough batch or sell them that I can fit it all in my mixer, even though I have the big six quart. I know there's a seven quart, haven't gotten, when this one dies, I'll get the bigger one. But, okay, so see how nice and pretty and smooth this is now? Now we're gonna do the fun part. My little scooper. Um, we're gonna measure out and drain this pumpkin. So now this is Hubbard squash, like I said before, but I have other that is made with princess. Uh, not, you know, I don't know why I keep calling the Cinderella squash princess squash. It's like a brain thing. All right, so in theory, 400 grams, but you know what, put in as much as you want. You just add enough flour to cover it. All right, because I'm making a double, this is 450 grams and I'm gonna let that be. Put that aside. Okay, now, and 400 grams, just for the sake of ounces, let's see what that comes to in ounces. Basically, it's just shy of a pound. So about 16, 15, 16 ounces of pumpkin. 
which would be two cups. Boom, done. Okay, my masher. You can use a potato masher. You can use one of these mashers. This is my Pampered Chef thing. Um, you can also, see this is, if you don't mind little teeny weeny chunks in your, um, what do you call it? In your pumpkin and in, in your bread, then you can use this. If not, hang on, I'm gonna get my, you can use your potato masher, which actually, you know, or if you have a, um, a potato ricer, which I have, but it's in the drawer behind my camera, so I'm not getting that. But those are fun too. You just want this to be nice and, and pureed. So see, nice pure pumpkin, or pump, yeah, pumpkin puree. Better than the stuff you get in a can, that's for sure. All right, and let's prep the one last thing. I've got some fresh sage leaves here. Uh, it's like five or six, one, two, four, six, six of them. So I'm going to put, lay them all on top of each other. I'm going to, what I'm going to do, because I don't want long strips, because I don't want you biting into it and then having it string. So I'm going to cut them in half long ways so that they're shorter. You can cut them in half, you can quarter them, third them, whatever you want. Cut them long and skinny. Let's do it. Let's do it two times. And then just cut little pieces real fine. And we're gonna just throw this in our dough little pieces we're gonna throw in throw in let's see let's do it this way oh the pan's hot hold on let's use this one because it's kind of spatula like and it will get everything out I have this thing with some cooking shows they don't use a rubber spatula. They put everything in and there's always stuff left in the bottom. And to me, that's an extra bite. That's sinful. I know they're doing it for TV and all that baloney, but you know what? Waste not, want not. That's why I love, hear the squeak, I'm getting it all out. One last piece. Okay, all off, set that aside. Move the knife because I don't want to knead into the knife. All right, we're just going to mix this all in. Oh, look at how pretty. Isn't that pretty? So it's still more like a batter at the moment, but then we're going to add enough flour to make it a dough, a deer. <laughs> Move my pumpkin over. Okay, so now I have my whole wheat flour. Let's take a moment here. Move this stuff over. Now, because like I said, this is gonna take more and I don't want it to be um, whole wheat heavy because it will be heavy. So I'm gonna put one cup of regular flour, white flour. And then I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna start with two cups and then I go. Um, this normal base bread recipe is approximately five to six cups of flour. You have to, you have to know what it feels like because it's never 100% exact due to the weather, due to how you measured. But this will take a little bit more flour because of the squash, the pumpkin, the zucca. So what I like to do is I like to get it most of the wet absorbed before I turn it onto the board. Put in another cup of whole wheat. Okay. My hands are clean. They're just now there's now they're dirty. <laughs> scrape out the bottom. So this is why I wore my white apron today because I got the the flour and you know I always wear my black aprons and when I do stuff with flour I always end up with a white front and um and uh, you know, it's a big a mess. 
So today I actually found a white apron in time to do my show. All right, so I'm gonna, so this is what I do. I always keep an extra cup of flour here. And I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit. And this is gonna just, this is a nice soft dough. There's little, couple little teeny weeny chunks of pumpkin in here, but I think it's gonna add such a nice um, texture. Oh, look at this pretty color. Do a little bit of hand cleaning here. The more dough that's on your hands, that's stuck to your hands, the more dough that's going to stick to your hands. So when you get to, once it starts getting less gooey, get the dough off your hands, and they won't have so much sticking to it. Otherwise, it just I don't know. Dough attracts dough. Okay. So just basically just folding it in and over itself while it's still kind of damp. We're gonna incorporate all the flour that's on the board first. Okay, still a little sticky. And this is definitely a lighter, stickier dough than like your standard dough once it, uh, you know, starts to, my board here, stick it a little. Now we can incorporate all of that. Almost there, probably gonna need just a little more do not be afraid of making bread, any bread, whether it's got pumpkin in it or nothing in it. Um, you know, worrying about exact measurements, you have to know what it feels like. This is still, you can see it's still too sticky. I don't think it's gonna take another whole cup, but I have it here. That was probably another quarter cup sprinkled on there. There we go. That definitely feels better already. And it's okay for your bread dough in the end to be a little tacky. You know, there's different rules of thumb and rule, there were different thoughts around the world of how much flour and how dry you want it to be. There's some people who say, put in as much flour as it'll hold. And then there's other people who are like, no, 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 leave it a little tacky comes out a little lighter. Just a little bit more. Okay. Look at that beautiful, look at that beautiful loaf. So we're going to take our original bowl and we're going to stick it in there. Look how pretty that dough is. Isn't it pretty? It's got a nice little orange hue to it. We're going to take this Cover it with a clean cotton towel and set it aside to rise. And with the magic of television, we have another one. Look at this. Made this one earlier. Oh, wow. That's so nice. Look at that. It's risen to fill the bowl. Doubled in size. More than doubled in size, I think. And um, I'm just going to get the stickiness off of here real quick. Oh, this is awesome. So we're going to do something really cool. So I'm going to wash my hands, get this stickiness off, even though I'm going to get sticky again. But give me one second. Now I have clean hands. And I'm going to get out a pan. We're going to use two kinds. So I do have a stoneware which makes really nice. And of course I've got my regular big old pans. So I'm gonna set these in front of me here. Oops, not a beautiful sound, sorry about that. And we're gonna take a little bit of olive oil and we're going to, oh, you know what I, you know what I didn't do in the second batch? I usually throw a little olive oil in there with the pumpkin, it's really nice. I forgot, it doesn't, it's not mandatory. Not necessary. There is olive oil in this batch. Just like cheap, that much. Um, I actually could work it in now. Um, there's, again, different ways you'll see bread being made. People that incorporate olive oil will mix the dough and then they'll work the olive oil in. 
I like to just throw it in with all the wet because sometimes when you're just home being mom or wife or friend or roommate or whatever, you just want to do something. And it, you know what? I haven't noticed. I've done it both ways. I have not noticed a difference in the end product. So anyway, but I do put olive oil on the bottom of my trays. See, and then we're going to have noise there. Okay. We're going to make our bread. Okay. Oh, look at that dough. It's beautiful. It's a nice. So what I'm going to do with this is cut it in half. One piece there and one piece here. Now, I've seen this done both ways, so we're going to try something. I've seen this done without kneading it a second time, as I often actually see it. I'm just going to split it up. You know, I can't do that. I always need it a second time. We're just going to give it a, a little knead. Sometimes they just take the bread and turn it out onto the pan. Okay, so I have this round loaf. Now this is what we're going to do. This is going to be so cool. Hang on. I'm trying to connect a little piece of... Is it perfect? We need a sharp knife. So if you have one of those um, lames, you know, those little, basically it's a razor blade for baking, um, you can use that. But we're going to cut this, make crisscross hatches. You can make six or eight. And it almost looks like a pumpkin and it's going to rise. And wait a minute, pumpkin seeds. So what I'm going to do here, actually I've got enough in the pan. I'm going to take a little bit of this oil and I'm going to put it on the pumpkin, especially in those creases. Because in those creases, we're going to put pumpkin seeds. The oil makes it wet and it makes it stick, but the dough's sticky too, so that's a piece of stem in there because these are these natural ones. These are all cool. These are a dark pumpkin seed that were roasted and they have just, they're different color. They're not all perfect like um, you see sometimes. Okay. And you know what I think might be cool just to give it a little look? Hold on, let me see if I have any cinnamon stick. Wouldn't this be cool to stick in the middle? Let me just break it in half. And now I've got, look at that. Isn't that cute? So we're going to let this rise. Let's stick this over here where it's warm. Let it rise a little bit more. Now this half, we're actually going to do the way I usually do. So we're going to see how all this comes out. which I'm going to need this more. And what I'm going to do with these, make some rolls. Look, a little bit of flour. I love doing experiments on here. I've done them myself before. All these different little experiments I do. Let it rise once, let it rise twice, let it rise longer, do it quicker. Um, but I'm having fun now redoing some of these things with you all. That way, if you have the same questions I've had in the past, you will know the answers. Okay, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do it on my other rack here. Put a little bit of olive oil on there. I'm going to make another little round roll. Let's 
see if I can get six of them out of here. So I tend, I tend to take the outside that has like the little flower covering on it and I fold into the wet part. That way it kind of makes a nice smooth, that's just how I do it. Turn it and there we go. And I think we're gonna get exactly what I was hoping for, six little rolls, which are gonna be six little pumpkins. So when it rises, it'll smooth out. This one's smaller, so I'm gonna just work this little piece inside of it. Okay, now I'll do the same thing. So instead of doing your normal slits that you would do, you, um, actually I'm just gonna take a little bit of dryness on top so I think they'll cut a little better. Oops, I've got flour right here. So they're a little less sticky. There we go. Okay. So you can do six or eight slices, but you want to go all the way to the bottom instead of like just a little crisscross on top. I think I'm going to have to get me one of those razor blade things because I think it'll work a lot better, especially if I'm going to start getting making my bread fancier. I've always just been a home bread maker. Well, I shouldn't say that. I used to make all the rolls every day for my restaurant every morning four o'clock in the morning <laughs> it was fun it served its purpose it was fun while it lasted oh this is pretty there's a little piece of ro uh not rosemary a little piece of sage popping through there okay so now we do the same thing we put a little oil on oh, my fingertips Oil the tops. Okay, I think I got it all off. So, this is gonna be so adorable. And you know, these seeds mm, are so good. So, let's go sit down. There. Hi. <laughs> so, I guess you can see behind me, I've been changing some things around. I just got my cool big baker's rack that I like to keep my cookbooks on. And so, that just got into the house. Um, uh, in the last day or two. So I've been putting it together, starting to get my stuff organized and be like, you know, make it start feeling like home. I'm happy here. It feels like home, but you know, without everything in its place and a place for everything doesn't necessarily, um, you know, feel a hundred percent yet. That's why I feel like I've been a little off and I apologize, but, um, I really feel like, um, I'm getting there, you know? So, um, this pumpkin, um, now there's a couple different ways you can actually make the pumpkin, the bread look like pumpkin. Um, if you make the dough a little drier, I would not do this with, I made the dough a little bit moist, um, cause I wanted it to be really light. Um, I would make it a little bit of a drier dough. So maybe add just a smidge more flour. You can actually take your dough balls and use string, like kitchen string, and tie it around so that as it rises, it poofs out, and it really looks much more pumpkiny. It'll look more like this. Boom! <laughs> really deep. Uh, where is it? Really deep grooves. You know, this is going to have a little bit of a groove. And if I made deeper cuts, um, you know, you can play with it and and design your own. Or you can just make a loaf of bread and it's still gonna look beautiful and sprinkle some pumpkin seeds on top and you've got a beautiful pumpkin loaf. The reality is that um, the, um, when you make the pumpkin, when you make any kind of funny shaped bread, it really is kind of a pain to slice. It looks pretty when it's out, but then when you're slicing it, you know, pieces are falling apart and all this kind of stuff. There's another way that I could have done, I should have actually done one. Um, you can make a bunch of little balls, so small ones, and then put them together. Um, and then they cook together like a little 
you know, that, then they have like the, the deeper grooves because it's all little individual ones. So you could put like five little, five or six little individual balls, smush them together. And then that will also look like a little pumpkin. Not everybody puts a little stem on it. I just thought it'd be cute. And a cinnamon stick, it's not gonna flavor the whole loaf of bread. Um, but it, at least, like I said, it's something that's non-toxic. Um, I, I could go out and get a stick, I guess. And in fact, one of the things, which I, I, I threw it away and I, I shouldn't have, was um, when, I cut the, um, when I cut the squash, there was actually a little, it was a stem on it. When I cut it off, it was just like this little piece of pumpkin. I could have probably actually stuck the actual stem with the little teeny piece of orange pumpkin that I had around it. I could have probably stuck that in the top, you know, that would have looked really cute and real, you know. But anyway, um, so uh, it's just, um, you know, be creative, have fun. And like I said, you can't mess up bread. You can add all kinds of stuff to it. And, you know, it's, um, it's, it just makes it more, I don't know, creative. And if you weren't afraid to mix the blue and the green and the orange Play-Doh together and it turned brown. Okay, so it turned brown. Um, but it was still Play-Doh. So if it was regular dough, so if you mix your white and your wheat and your pumpkin breads together or whatever, it's still gonna be a bread and it's still gonna be good. Flour, water, yeast, and salt is the base to any bread recipe. And as long as, like I said, as long as you don't kill the yeast, you will make bread. And as long as you put in a minimum of a tablespoon of salt, you need the salt for the flavor. Um, a tablespoon of salt divided into two loaves of bread is, you know, um, probably an eight, what's that? I don't know how to divide that up into slices, but a couple granules per slice, you know, but you need it for the flavor. So don't skimp on the salt. Don't overdo it, but don't skimp on the salt and don't kill your yeast and you will be fine. Really, truly, um, you know, can you let it rise longer? Can you let it, you know, there's breads that don't rise at all. You know, what about matzah? That's unleavened bread. So if you end up with a cracker, so be it. It's a cracker today. Um, if you put in a lot of yeast or something, you overdo the yeast and you end up with this big puff ball, then okay, you've got some soft white American bread or something, you know. Um, the key though to getting a good crust is cooking it on high heat. You need that high heat to, um, to make um, the crust crisp up at the, you know, at the beginning and it gets nice and crusty. Uh, some people will turn the oven down a little bit after the first 15, 20 minutes. You know, it's gonna cook for probably like 40 minutes, 40, 50 minutes. Um, I never really pay a whole 100% attention, but, um, but it really does, uh, you know, help. It definitely makes a difference if you want crusty bread. If you want soft bread, then cook it a little lower um, and a little shorter. If you want it crusty, cook it higher in a, you know, an extra minute or two. And if you want a good crusty Italian bread, I don't know who doesn't like crust. I mean, just the crust is the best. Um, if you want a nice crust on it though, and you think it's done, always give it an extra couple minutes because that's just um, the way it is when I first made bread and I gave some to my grandfather and I said, how do you like it? And he goes, cook it longer. And uh, I think I've told this story before, but cook it longer. Basically he was just telling me to cook it longer. He didn't say higher, but also that too, because he wanted it, he wanted it, it might have had a crust on it, but it wasn't, didn't have that real hardcore crust, that Italian crust that he loved. So anyway, so that's that. Hold tight here. I'm gonna see, I have a feeling, let's see if anybody's got any bread questions because Bread questions are always there. And if you're on watching and you've never been here before, please say hello. Um, I would really, really like to be able to say hello back. Let's see here. Oh, my beautiful new laptop. Well, it's not a new laptop. My new, I have a new battery for my laptop. I'm so happy. I just got that. I'm gonna give a shout out to Saltwater Media. Um, in Berlin, Maryland, they have probably one of the only and best, I guess you're, if you're the only, I guess you are the best. <laughs> Patty is the, um, the uh, she's an Apple certified uh, technician, so she can fix all your Apple stuff. If you're in this area, she's awesome. 
course she's a paisan, you know, Patty Gregorio. Love it. Um, let's see if I can find you guys on my laptop and I can see if we have any questions here. Um, oh, I could have used scissors to cut the top of the bread. Thanks, mom. Um, oh yeah, I always love to punch the bread down. That's like one of my favorite things. Yeah, you can use a food mill to puree, um, a food mill, a potato masher, a um, potato ricer. You could even, I mean, if you really feel the need, you could put it in the food processor. The thing is, I mean, if you want it like 100% um, pureed, like 100% with not, line, not any little teeny chunks at all, um, the potato ricer really works nicely. Um, and then a food processor, let it, let it sit for a minute. But even if it's a little watery, it's okay. You know, I drained it for a second in the strainer, but you know, it's gonna have water in it. It doesn't matter, just add a little more flour. So there you go. Hi, Leo, my son Leo's watching. And hi, Denise and Keith. All right, well, no questions. It's just a bunch of hellos, that's good. But I do like the the, the reminder that you can use the scissors, um, your kitchen scissors to, um, to uh, slice up the, uh, I slice the slits, you know, so that's kind of cool. So anyway, that's that. Um, so like I said, if you're there, check it out. Um, come, wa come watch it. If you just came on, watch how we made it. We're going to make, um, I'm going to make some more out of, actually out of the other dough that I made while you guys were watching before I brought out the TV version. Um, I am gonna probably make a focaccia out of that and some more rolls. So I'm kind of excited. Uh, so basically all I'm gonna do with the focaccia is take that same dough, I'm gonna cut it in half because half of that will be one pizza pan worth. Um, spread it out gently with my fingers. If it's bouncing back, let it rest for a minute, then spread it some more. And I think I'm just gonna put olive oil and some coarse salt. And maybe, I think maybe I'm gonna do half, I think, I don't know, maybe I'll put pumpkin seeds on half and maybe I'll put some of that sage, even though there's sage in the dough, maybe some sage and garlic, crushed garlic and, yeah, that would be good. Crushed garlic and sage and some coarse salt on the whole thing. That's what I'm gonna do. I bet that'll be really good. So anyway, all right, well, it's Friday. And instead of getting into something long and detailed today, um, we are gonna actually go take a peek at the, at the bread. And um, then I'm gonna sign off because I'm going to a wedding. Um, I'm gonna be very careful. My wonderful next door neighbor who sews masks made me a pretty black one to match my black outfit that I'm wearing to the wedding. So um, that's cool. And I'm wearing my mask, I'm gonna do social distance, I know. Weddings, um, weddings are, you know, breeding grounds for germs or whatever. So I'm not going to kiss anybody, you know, all that stuff, but I am going to be careful, but I'm going to go and have a good time. Um, it's not a big wedding, so we're being safe. It's one of my oldest, dearest friends, my friend, Leslie, who was my roommate back in 1987, New Year's Eve. She moved in with me. So New Year's Eve of 86 going into 87. We were we were driving her to my house to move in and be my with my, you know, share my apartment. So I was excited. So we've known each other all these years and um she's getting married and she's so so happy and I'm so happy that she's happy. So um you know, it's nice when you hear joy in people's voices. Um it's 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 catchy, you know. And she and I, we've been through a lot together over the years and we've been there for each other for ups and downs. And so now I'm really happy for her and I can't wait to go to this wedding. Of course, she wanted a Halloween wedding. So um, she told everybody to dress accordingly. I'm just going in black. I'm not wearing a witch hat though, not doing it. Um, but I do have these really cool shoes, which I'll show you afterwards because I don't want her to accidentally see them. Um, but they're purple and black, they're cool. Um, so anyway, uh, let's go look at the bread and see if it's poofing up a little bit yet. So let's go. Oh, look at that. Whoops, there we go. Yeah, I'm gonna open this up. Okay, it's getting a little, a little lopsided there. My, my cinnamon stick's not exactly centered. 
but it looks good. The bottom looks like it's um, bubbling from the olive oil. I'm gonna turn you back around again. Um, the, uh, the bread, it's definitely risen. And uh, oh, let's get this back here. There we go. Um, so it looks good. So I'll post a picture of it when, when it's all done later on and you guys can see it. I'll put the actual recipe up. Um, I want to apologize because um, previously I would, um, as soon as I was done with videos, I would go and do the blog post on my website and post the written recipe. And I have not done that these two weeks. I'm really sorry, but I've been doing the show and then jumping immediately to work on the house, you know, unpack another box. Never realized how many books we had, but I love books. I don't know, it's so hard to get rid of books, but I'm gonna get rid of some. Anyway, um, so um, I will, I, my goal this coming week is to catch up on the written recipes. I will have them on my website uh, this coming week, all of the ones we've done in the last two weeks, all these pumpkin ones. I'll probably lighten up a little bit on the pumpkin coming forward because I really have some other things I wanna make. But um, we'll probably have a few more closer to Thanksgiving. And uh, that's that. So have a great day. Don't forget, if you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go to youtube.com slash Darina's Kitchen and subscribe, please. I'm almost, I'm four people away, four, not eight, four people away from hitting 900. And then I'm on my road to 1,000. So um, please, if you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go and subscribe. If you don't already um, like my page, please do. Um, and you can hit the little dingy bell at the top next to my name that will tell you when we go live. So that way there's no surprises, you know, that you miss something. You'll always know when we're live and you can come on and, um, and uh, watch us cook and have some fun and get some life lessons. Right now, we're just kind of chitty chatting, but I'm gonna get back. I've actually found some really cool people I wanna interview, so we're gonna be doing that too. So have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you guys next week. Mwah! Ciao.